own door housing is much more affordable to produce. Affordability is the key issue and the cheaper you can make the product for the consumer and better. If you look at all public open spaces and you drive around big estates, they usually have one big area that serves maybe 20% of the development. How about change that and make that public open space greatly reduced, but reallocate it to every location? We don't need just a big green area anymore. No. People now need exercise area, playground areas. You know, they need allotments where they can grow plants and things like that. That's where the future is. Benches moving. where they can Benches have Benches where they can sit out. Yeah. It has all changed. So, What do you look for then specifically for families? Something that we take into account is, and, and in fairness to the previous governments, they made massive investments in schools. Mm. Uh, Childcare is a huge issue. So all of these things you have to kind of factor in is when we come to our development, Will the a school availability be there? Will the childcare be there? Will the amenities as in the football clubs, the parks and things like that, will the retail be there to back all this up? And then is it serviced by good public transport? All of those factors we take in. And that's why we look five years forward because we're always looking at where is that investment going to be made? When will it be delivered? And then for our customers, when they move in, when can they avail of all of that? We stand behind the customer for a number of months and up to years after. So the consumer knows that if something goes wrong or they need to follow up on something, we're here. And I suppose that's our long-term goal of where we're trying to bring the business. And really, that to us then builds credibility. Mm. Customers feel a lot more comfortable dealing with us. They know we're there. They know we have, you know, obviously we're in a very financially strong position to deliver. Mm. All of that really it gives them certainty mm. because I think they came from an era where so much uncertainty and they ended up buying a home and the developer went bust. The roads weren't finished. The lights weren't on. The crash was never completed. All of these factors we front load because we now control the supply chain as much by, by having our own factories, by driving the innovation, we're now looking at the house of the future. What does it look like? We have to get to net zero. Mm. And the challenge with net zero is we have to take carbon out of not only the use, the use life of the product, the we have to take it out of the production yeah. of the product. And this is where the challenge is really going to be. Because inevitably today what we produce the house is, and you're obviously in a timber frame house, but you need concrete, mm. which is a high intensity carbon hungry product. How are we going to remove as much of that as possible? How are we going to remove plastic? How are we going to remove uh, rock wool? Things like that. This is where the circular economy is really going to have to come to the fore. How are we going to insulate our walls? Is there a different form of insulation going on? How are we going to design our roofs to take as much radiation as possible to produce power? All of these factors are going to come into play. I think it's in for a sea change. You've never had such a demand for housing. Why is it so hard to produce it? If we have to apply 40 units a hectare, the breakdown at this moment in time to comply with that density is 45% apartments, 55% houses. We have designed it in a way and we've looked at all the regulation that has existed. And a lot of this regulation stems from 120 years old. The study that we carried out was very simply. We took the two consumers, one that lived in the apartment, one that lived in the house. The person that lived in, in say, the two bedroom townhouse had 800 square foot of space yeah. and they had about 50 square meters in their rear back garden and they had two car, spots, two car park spots to the front yeah. of the house. Pretty good. Yeah. The person living in the two-bedroom apartment got one car park space yeah. and got, got 80 square meters of all usable space between lobby areas and the whole lot. What we did then was we rebalanced the private open space to say everyone gets 40 square meters. And the reason we started with the principle of 40 was it allowed for you to, into the future, adopt that house because you had X amount of space if you wanted to build onto, build an extension, re-alter the house, whatever it might be. We started with that principle. And that was actually in the planning code. And that's where we said, well, there's a rule they have, so let's start with that. We need to cater for the person who's single because you know, a certain amount of people always want to be single for maybe all their lives, mm -hmm. that's fine. But we need to cater for product for them. We need to cater for people, unfortunately, who may end up being divorced and they need product. We need to cater for the family that are starting out. We need to cater for the family who are trading up. But the other people that we really need to trade for is the person yeah, that wants to die, says. So what we designed was, we designed for all various groups of things at a percentage. Mm. And what we realized very quickly is, and what Sweden does really well is, you start in the development and you can end in the development. Yeah. 
And doing that was your cycle or your life cycle, everyone got used. And if we apply these principles, we would make our housing market work much better. Because mm -hmm. if you think about someone who's, I don't know, an elderly person, 70 years of age, they're on their own, they're living in a three bedroom home, it's a D1, it's energy use is massive, they can't afford it, but they've nothing to trade down to. And they don't, I suppose what, what I, a lot of what we're doing and talking about today is about community. They don't want to leave that. Absolutely. They've been there all their lives. They've made their friends. They know the butcher. They know that they probably play tennis. They play bridge. They play whatever in their community. So that life cycle is, is ultimately what you're it trying is, to do is, is get everybody with their own front door. Own door housing is much more affordable to produce. So it makes sense business-wise. Absolutely. But it makes, go back to our point, affordability is the key issue. And the cheaper you can make the product for the consumer and better. It's more expensive to build an apartment. So by getting rid of them out of the scheme, nobody wants them in the first place. In certain areas, obviously in they cities. They actually cause the biggest consternation when you're going in for a planning application. When people see four-story apartments, they kind of think, in here's high-rise coming to suburban. In a looking. small town or a small Absolutely. village. Yeah. And it irates people because they're, they're kind of looking at, well, I live in a two-story house and here's a four-story block going beside me. Where do you think we can learn the most from housing? The first place we had to start was the UK because it had the closest regulation to us. Yeah. Where have they gone? Because they had the principles we had, so how had they evolved? They definitely have evolved dramatically. They actually are achieving these units. They're limiting the amount of apartments they're building. They're not at the same scale we are in energy efficiency, but they've certainly moved the, the dials dramatically. The country that probably has led the charge best is probably Holland. It has really evolved where it has brought its product. You don't see as much high rise. It's two, three, four story maximum. But very dense. Very dense. And really not. And kind of, amenities all around it. Yeah. Right in the city centre, we've one of the most dense developments you can have. Stony Batter. Yeah. Where it's all two story houses and it's 70 units hec hectare. So when everyone says, oh, you can't do this. We did this years ago. And we fact, just dropped it. Okay, you One of the most desirable to new, places to live. One of the most. We actually went up there and we actually engaged with the community to get a sense of how they felt. They're the happiest people in life. They have parks beside them. They have two door, uh, two story housing. It meets all their needs. It's one of the most desirable communities in the city to live in. So if you applied that, we were able to do it years ago. Imagine what we could do if we could take certain zones closer to the city and say, right, we have to achieve eighty units a hectare. The principles are, it can't be any higher than two or three stories. Show me how you can do it.